Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bajigny. Nice to see you all again. This is lecture seven to finish chapter five. And then after that, I will start talking about chapter six. As I mentioned in the previous tape, I was, I was talking about uh, the parallel circuit where we have resistors are connected in parallel. So those resistors, they share two nodes and also the voltage across them are the same. So as we see here in this circuit, we see that R1, R2 and R3 and R4, all they share one uh, node on the top and one node in the bottom. So this is node one, and this is node two. And the voltage across them is E or, or V, whatever we wanna call it. Okay, sometimes as I said, some books they use E, some books they use E, so that's why in this lecture or in this course, sometimes I use both. So this is could be, so the vo voltage here is E here, another E here, another E here or V. And again, as it mentioned here, that the power resistors make determining the current through each branch simply by applying Ohm's law. So if you notice here, when we apply Ohm's law, we can find I1 is equal E over R1, and I2 is equal to E over R2, and I3 equals to IE equal R3, and I four is equal E over R four. And as we mentioned also that we know from KCL that the current entering the node must equal the current leaving the node. So the current entering the node is I and the currents leaving the node is I one, I two and I three and I four. So we can write the formula for KC, KCL is equal to I equal I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. Okay, so simply this is what we call it the Kirchhoff's current law. So what is current divider or current division? Current divider, it meant that we have I, this is the total current, this is the current that comes out from the power supply, that I is going to be divided among these four resistors here. Okay, I1, I2, and I3. So this is the meaning that the current division. So we need to establish, we need to find a formula that will help us to determine I1, I2, I3, and I4 using the IT or I, the total current. So this is what it meant that we, uh, we meant with the current division. Since we know the equivalent resistance, we can find the total current entering the node. Uh, note we use E or V in this uh, uh, as a supply voltage. So what is it meant here that we can find the total equivalent resistance that will be combined all of this and we call it R equivalent. I mentioned this before, but just I'm going to give you a review. So to find I, so I will be E or V over R equivalent, okay? And again, to find R equivalent, we have to use the formula, the general formula, one over R equivalent is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3, plus one over R4. And then after we find the right hand side, we plug for the value of R1, R2, R3, and R4. Then we take the reciprocal of the right hand side and the reciprocal of the left hand side. Okay, so we have to remember this here. Okay, so let's consider the circuit shows as an example. So now here we have only two resistors, okay, R1 and R2. 
and we have IT or I, whatever we call it. Again, sometimes we call it I, some calls we call IT. So this is the total current. This is the total current that will be coming out from the voltage supply V. Now we need to divide this IT among R1 and R2. So this is the meaning again of the current dividers. I want to divide that current. I want to I wanna find the sharing of each resistance, how much I1 and how much I2 out of I. T. So, so if we look for the IT or how to find, so how to find the voltage V is equivalent. So if we know what is the RT here, we'll be able to find, you know, the V, which is the voltage V across the, so V equal to IT times R equivalent. Now we know that the R equivalent, according to the formula, of the, uh, the product over the sum, we can find R equivalent, because we have only two resistance, so it will be the product, R1 times R2, divide by the sum, R1 plus R2, okay? So this is the equivalent, this is equivalent to these two resistors. Now again, this formula here, it's a special case, as I mentioned. Now you could find the same result if we use 1 over R equivalent is equal to over R1 plus 1 over R2. And if we take the reciprocal, we find the same result. But again, if we have only two resistors are connected in parallel, the easiest and the fastest formula is the, uh, the product over the sum, which is this one here that I just mentioned here. So again, if we plug for R equivalent, which is R1 times R2 times R, R, R1, R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. This is R equivalent, R equivalent. Now, after we find the voltage, now I need to find the current, I1. So we know I1, then the current through the resistance R1, is equal to the voltage across AB, which is the V, divided by R1. So here's the V, this the uh, V is IT R1, R2, okay? So this is our V from here. So we plug for IT R1, R2 over R1 divided by, now R1 will cancel out with the R1. So what we left with, we left with IT times R2 over R1 plus R2, and the same thing for finding I2. So again, the first step is to find R equivalent. Second step is to find the voltage, because when we apply Ohm's law across R1 and across R2, we need to know what is the voltage. Here's the voltage. After that, we apply Ohm's law to find I1 and then to find I2. So again, this is the voltage, you know, V. This is the V here from this equation. Again, this is the V. Plug it here and this is R2. So R2 will cancel out with this R2. We left with IT is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2. Okay, so as, as a summary here, <clears throat> as a summary, we can say that, uh, we can say that I1 equals to IT, Okay, so now I need to find I1. So when to find I1, I take the total current and multiply it by the opposite resistor, R2. Divide by the sum, R1 plus R2. Just this is a way to remember these two formula, the I2 and the formula of I1. How? Find I1. Okay, 
we multiply IT by the opposite, by the other resistor, which is R2. And then to find I2, the denominator will be the same as R1 plus R2, and IT will be the same, but we multiply by the opposite of 2, which is R1. So I see the difference here between the two formula. If I need to find I1, I will take IT multiplied by the other resistor, R2, and divide by the sum, R1 plus R2. If I want to find I2, I will uh, multiply IT by R1, divide by R1 plus R2. Okay, so let me move to the next slide. Okay, sometimes if we have a parallel circuit, R1 and R2, and if we have a short, which means the positive polarity of the power supply, which is this point, is directly connected by a wire to the negative. This, in this case, the current division won't work. So all the current IT will flow through this path and will overpass the R1 and R2. So in this case, as it meant in the extreme case, if one resistor goes to zero, which means either one R1 or R2 goes to zero, be short, then all the current passes through that branch. Okay, so it will be very high. And in this case, again, this situation is not required or it's not accepted. So we have to put a breaker here or we have to put a fuse in order to protect the power supply. Otherwise, a very, very high current will flow through this wire and it will damage the power supply. Okay, let's see here how we apply the current division technique. We have referred to circuit in figure 5.24. A, find R2 such that the equivalent resistance is 4. B, find the current I1 and I2. Okay, so let's see here. If we look through this formula, this is actually the formula of R equivalent. R equivalent is equal to R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Again, what is the name of this special case? It's called product over the sum. Now we are given the R equivalent, which is 4K equals. We are also given R1, so 20. R2, we need to find it. So 20 times R2 over 20 plus R2. So now we have R2 is unknown. Now what we need to do, we need to do the cross multiply. Cross multiply mean we, this is four divided by one. So we multiply four times 20 plus R2 equals to one times 20 R2. Remember the, remind you with uh, the cross multiply, if we have A over B is equal to C over D. So cross multiply means A times D equals B times C. So this is the meaning of the cross multiply. So we do here, we do multiply four times 20 plus R2 equals one times 20 R2. So this would be 80 plus 4 R2 equal to 20 R2. 
So if we uh, if we move four R two to the other side, we will have uh, twenty R two equal to eighty uh, equal to sixteen. Sorry. So it would be uh, sorry sixteen. Let's go back here. So 20 minus four, because we move the four to the other side, it will be 20 R2 minus a four, it will be 16 R2. So divide by 16, both sides, we get R2 equals to 80 over 16, which is this value. Okay, so now we find the uh, R2, so this is R2. Okay, after that, we need to go to the current division. Again, current division I1 equals to IT, which is in this case, IT is here. So IT always the current coming out from the power supply and entering the node. This is our node here, okay? So this is 50 milliamps is our IT. Now, I need to find I1, so we take IT and then multiply by the other resistor, okay? Not by R1, it's by R2. They call the opposite resistor. Divide by the sum of the two resistors. So again, to solve this example, I have to find R2 first and then apply the current division. So this is, will be 50 multiplied by R2, which is five, over the sum of 20 plus five. Okay, <clears throat> so this is will be uh, whatever, 10 milliamps. Okay, to find I2, again, it will be IT multiply by the opposite resistance, which is the other one resistor, which is R1 over R1 plus R2. So I2 equals to 50 multiplied by 20, which is R1, over 20 plus 5, which is 25, and we get 50, uh, 40 milliamps. So it's so easy to apply the current division rule. This is very important. I want you to understand it very well. Okay, for the uh, circuit in this figure, figure 5.27, find the current I1, I2, and I3. So this is will be, again, uh, we could use the other technique here, which is using uh, the G, or we could use the equivalent, uh, the, uh, the conductance. Okay, so to solve this type of the problem now, if you notice here, we have more than one, more than two resistors. So we have three resistors. So in this case, there's two methods. The method number one, we'll use the conductances. And method number two, we use the resistance. I want you to focus only on method number one because it's so easy, it's much easier than method number two. So just let us focus on using method number one. So method number one, what we need to find, we need to find the G equivalent. What is a G again? It's one over. You remember one over R equivalent is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. So one over R, uh, uh, R equivalent is equal G equivalent. G equivalent, and this is G1 plus G2 plus G3. So that's what we're going to use. So in this case, we are looking for I1. So I1 is equal what? Is equal to G1 over G equivalent multiplied by IT or I. So in this case, if we call this is I or IT. So in, the, in this case, the, in the book called I. So I is the current coming out from the supply. Now in this case, we have a current, current source instead of voltage source. So CI1 here, 
we're looking for I1. So we take I multiplied by G1, which is the, uh, the conductance of R1. Now G1 is equal to one over six. We have six ohm here. And G2 is equal to one over four. And G3 is equal to one over 12. So these are the values of G1 and G2. The values of G equivalent will be the sum of G1 plus G2 plus G3. So this is the first thing we wanna do, finding the total or equivalent conductance. Okay, G equivalent, one over six plus one over four plus one over 12, which is 0.5 Siemens. This is the units one over ohms, okay? Yeah, the units one over call, they call, they call it uh, Siemens. Now, again, to find I1, what we do, we take IT or I, that coming out from the supply and entering the node. This is the node here. And this is another node. So I1 will be I multiplied by G1, which is the inverse of G1, uh, R1. Uh, over our equivalent. So one over six divided by 0.5 multiplied by 10, we get this value for I1. Then I2, I2 is I multiplied by G2, which is the same, uh, 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 the re re uh, reluctance of the same resistance that we are looking, the current that goes through it will be I times G2 over R equivalent. This is the formula for the I2. Now I3 is I multiplied by G3, which is 1 over 12, divided by G equivalent. So again, this method, if you have more than, uh, if you have more than two resistors, this method, it's very, very simple compared to the method number two, when we use Method number two, we have to combine the two resistors in parallel, try to reduce the three resistors, parallel circuit, and two resistors, parallel circuit, and then we, we can use the current division as previously. That's why it's, it's a little bit hard. Now, if we try to use the, uh, the first method, the uh, conductance method, for the practice problem 5.7. That will be, again, it's simple. So we have to find G equivalent, which is one over four plus one over five plus one over 20. After that, we need to find I1. So I1 will be 12 multiplied by G1, which is one over four, divide by the G equivalent. So we have to determine the value of G equivalent. And then the same thing for I2 will be 12 multiplied by one over five. This is a G2 divided by G equivalent. And then we do the same thing for I3 will be 12 multiplied by one over 20 divided by G equivalent. Okay. Okay, if we try again, now we could use the, uh, the, the, the method number two, I just uh, skipped it in the previous slide. There is a formula for that. We can use that formula if we want. Okay, so this is IX. This is X means at, you know, like X, let's say X I1, for example. If I wanna find I1, see this formula here? If we have more than, uh, if we have more than two resistors and we need to use the, uh, the resistance rather than the conductance, this is the formula IX. So IX, IX, is equal to R equivalent over Rx 
multiply by i t. So i x, let's say I need to find i one. So i one will be r equivalent over r one multiplied by i t. Okay. So the formula for finding or using the current division for parallel resistors more than two, this is the formula that you need to use. Okay. It's much easier than the previous method. Let's look back here for the previous method. Uh, look down here. This is a little bit harder. Okay. Now, if we if we take this example, you know, the uh, the the practical or the practice example, and we want to use the resistance rather than the conductance, we can use the formula in the next slide here. Okay, I x. So I one. So I one would be I one would be R equivalent. But you have to find R equivalent there. Divide by R one, multiply by I t. Okay. So if we go back to the previous slide, and we want to find I one here. Okay. So we have to find R equivalent again to find R equivalent. One over R equivalent is equal to one over uh, four plus one over five plus. 1 over 20. And then we take the reciprocal of the right hand side and the reciprocal of the uh, left hand side. 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20. So you have to have calculate this value and divide 1 over that value to find R equivalent. After that, we plug for R equivalent here and plug for R1. And then the same thing to find uh, I2, it will be R equivalent divided by R2, which is 5, multiplied by IT, which is 12. Okay, and the same thing here, we have R equivalent, we need to find the value of the R equivalent first, multiply by 12 over R1. Okay, so this is Again, this is we can use this formula again. The IX equal R equivalent, this one, to determine the currents in each resistors if we have more than two resistors. Okay, in conductance, again, this is the one that we just use in the previous example. If you want to use that one, that's fine. So any, if we have any value or any number, you know, I1, the K could be one, two, three, four, whatever, how many resistors we have, okay? So either we use this technique to find, the, to use the current division technique, we use the conductance, or we could use the resistance either if we have only two resistors then we have i1 equals to i t multiplied by r2 over r1 plus r2 so this is for only two resistors for more than one res uh, more than three resistors we use i x equal r equivalent over r x multiplied by i t and X is the uh, any number or any resistors. Could be resistor number one or two or three. Or you could use this, the con uh, conductance. So sometimes I see that using the conductance is much easier than using the, uh, yeah. But again, it's up to the person. You could use either one of these two techniques. Troubleshooting uh, circuits do not always perform as expected. So troubleshooting means we want to find out what's wrong with the circuit. Sometimes, you know, circuit, something happened to the circuit, either lose connection or some of the elements are burned out. So 
we need to troubleshoot them. We need to find out what's wrong with the circuit. An important role for a technician is to be able to identify the problem at hand or troubleshoot. This is, this, uh, th this is a process by which knowledge and experience are used to diagnose a defect uh, circuit. Uh, rules of thumb. Uh, with experience and knowledge of the basic laws of electrical circuit, one can locate the cause of a defect in a given circuit. So when you have experience, when you have the knowledge, you know, the meaning of uh, parallel circuit, the meaning of the series circuit, what are the characteristics of the series circuit? For example, if one of the element is, is, is damaged, that means it's an open. So that means there's no current flowing. Uh, the characteristic of the parallel circuit. So if there is a problem with the, uh, you know, the short circuit, for example, if the two ends of the resistor in a power cell is being connected, then you have uh, uh, some kind of a short circuit or high current flowing uh, from the power supply. So with experience and knowledge of the basic laws of electrical circuit, one can locate the cause of a defect in a given circuit. Here are a few rules of thumb. Check the connection. So first thing you need to do, there's a problem, check the connection. Maybe there's a loose connection that, you know, for example, if you have resistors in series, for example, okay? Maybe for some reason that this connection here or this connection here or the connections to the power supply is a loose or being disconnected. So first you need to be sure that there is a solid connection among or between those elements like R1, R2 and RT and the voltage and R3 and the voltage supply. Follow every line from the supply to the ground. So you have to follow the line, see if there is any, uh, uh, any uh, disconnect. Make sure every leg of each component is connected to only what is supposed to. Uh, supposed to. So be sure that the R2 is, has to be connected to R3, not you know other way around, or R1 has to be connected to R2 and so on. And the voltage supply has to be connected to the uh, one of the terminal of R1, not the other way around. Because having these connections in, in reverse might change the performance of the, uh, of the circuit. At the component level, at this level, we are trying to identify the branch or element causing the trouble. So after you do, you, you check the, the connection, go and check every element, okay? Measure the voltage across that element. If you see the voltage, you know, it's high or it's low, that means some wrong with that, uh, with that element. The easiest uh, to find are the short circuit and the open circuit. So sometimes again, you have a resistance here, you have another resistance here, another resistance here connected to the power supply. When you, if there's a, an open circuit here, so when you measure the voltage across this one, you don't see the volt because there is a missing connection here. And the same thing when you measure the voltage so if you measure the voltage between these two points, you find the voltage of the power supply. But if you measure the voltage between uh, the, the two ends of this resistance, R2, for example, you put a voltmeter here, you will find it's a zero volt. So there's something wrong. That means it's an open circuit. If, if there is a short, for example, between these two points here, that somehow there is a wire, or whatever is happening, causing this point to be directly connected to this point through a wire. And if you measure the voltage here by a voltmeter, you will find it's a zero volt. So that means there is a short circuit. So again, you know, uh, often a component that is burned out will act as an open circuit 
in a parallel circuit, we will see normal voltage and less total current because again, when we have a, a short circuit that the current that goes through the other resistors will be small. So for example, if there's a short here, there's no current will flow here. Current will be almost a zero for a small value because most of the current IT, if you have an IT coming in, all, most of it will go through the short and very small value close to zero will go through this resistor here. So again, this is uh, a technique that will <clears throat> com come up with an experience and a knowledge and practice. Short circuit, in the case of a short circuit in a power circuit, all the current will flow through the short and none through other components. The total current will be greater than normal. None of the laws will operate. So again, if these are lights, for example, or a heaters, and for some reason there will be a short circuit, which means the positive terminal that connected to the power supply will be directly to connect to the negative side or to the ground uh, point, then all the current or most of the current will flow and this terminal won't have, or these elements won't have enough current to operate the, uh, the load. So none of the loads will operate. And again, for the safety of the power supply and for the safety of the wire that might become an overheat because the more current flow in the wire, the more heat will be produced. And that heat, if it stays for a long time, is going to melt the insulator and might cause a fire. So that's why, as I mentioned earlier, that they will put a breaker here, a switch, or call a breaker. If high current will flow, that breaker or that switch will open and will disconnect the power supply to the load. So then after the owner or the technician find out what's wrong with it and fix the problem, then you can turn on the switch again. Now, sometimes, especially like in cars, they put a fuse here. They put a fuse box, fuse. So what fuse does? A fuse is made of a, of a wire. Okay? So when a high current will flow through the fuse, that high current will burn the fuse and will create a, a, a gap. So it will stop the current flow to protect the, uh, the power supply and to protect the wire. Again, this is the same thing. And again, I mentioned here fuse. Here's the fuse. So if <clears throat> when the current flow very high, the fuse will burn out and it will disconnect the current because it become an open circuit. Okay, most likely, I think I'm going to stop here. And the next video, I will talk about uh, the material of uh, chapter uh, six, which is basically is talking about the combined circuit. When we have elements are connected in series, are connected to an elements or two elements are connected in parallel. And this type of circuit, they call the combined series and parallel circuit. Thank you for your listening and we'll see you next time.